Hello there, Rams. Welcome to another episode of KRAM. I'm Trey Kennedy. And I'm Rachel Yates, coming at you with the latest in student news. To start off today, we're checking in with the student support group Sources of Strength. While this initiative was started by counseling, it's the students that make the program successful. Sources of Strength has been a part of Rampart for several years. Sources of Strength is a suicide prevention and wellness program. It's focused around like a wheel of like different parts in people's lives that bring them together, that bring them strength, that help them through tough times. As well as positive and caring adult relationships. In Sources of Strength, they inspire others, but what inspired them to be involved? I received a little peer letter, or just like a request to join Sources of Strength. I think it's teacher nominated, so teachers like a recommendation for you, and you uh, go from there. I saw how students were seeking adult relationships, as well as students were connecting their fellow students to help. And I saw that power, and I wanted to be a part of it. Everybody knows that Sources is there to help, but their symbol has great meaning too. There's a wheel and then each one has a different color. The orange is family support, yellow is positive friends, green is mentors, blue is healthy activities, gray is generosity, purple is spirituality, and the lighter blue is medical access, and the red is mental health. The colors also correspond to months of the year. September's color is orange, and orange represents family support. It represents just the people in your life that you think of as family, and that you call family, and that support you. Sources also holds different activities and opportunities to show support for the community. The carnival is this activity that we put together in both lunches and we just set up different games. So whenever you do a game, you get a ticket and then they're gonna pick one person and then you get like a shirt or a pop socket. Something that I'm excited about is that I'm gonna be one of the peer leaders working on finals week for both December and May and we get hot chocolate and stuff. I'll be helping work with that. Uh, I know uh, October 26th, I think, is the trunk or tree and we have a little thing we're setting up there. It's kind of like a Halloween thing for like elementary middle school kids that come in to Ramparts park online, we kind of give out candy, play games and stuff. If students are wanting to be a part of it and they want to come up to us and say, hey, I want to be a part of the peer leader program for sources, um, we're open to that. We just need to make sure that students go to the peer leading training. If you want to make an impact with Rampart, think about joining Sources of Strength. This has been Nicole Smith signing off from KRAM. It's never too late to get involved in our Sources of Strength program. Stop in our counseling office to get more involved. Dancers, singers, comedians, and performers of all types should be getting revved up for this year's multicultural show. Rampart's multicultural show is a chance to show off your talents and quirks that you absolutely won't want to miss. Auditions are going to be held October 11th. So start rehearsing. Mischief Perry and Ms. Gutierrez are in charge of the show and can answer any of your questions before you audition. With some of the most academically gifted students in Colorado, Free College Application Day is coming up and colleges all around the state will be participating. And you should too. Free College Application Day is on October 15th and it's a great opportunity to apply without having to pay application fees to any public university and most of the private universities in Colorado.
Ms. Schneider and the NHS leadership will be helping students that care to apply on the 15th as well. On a more serious note, a widespread epidemic is spreading through our nation. The mass of child pornography being spread through social media apps such as Snapchat and Instagram is becoming a major issue. KRAM talked to some of the experts about the issue. In America, sending or receiving sexually suggestive texts while being under the age of 18 is a crime. Rampart staff that are concerned about this decided to let us know why you shouldn't sext. So sexting uh, basically boils down to that it's illegal to distribute, possess, display, or publish a private image of a juvenile. Well, after teaching a relationships class for the last 20 years, I've noticed that a lot of kids can do things that they later regret. They'll make mistakes that uh, they, at the time seems like an okay thing, but later on will come back to haunt them. Kids think that they're just texting their boyfriend, girlfriend, their friend, and they send pictures of themselves that are not appropriate without understanding what the consequences are. They let us know how sending nudes affects you and the people around you. It affects the students, it affects their families. If the student sends it on to someone else, it becomes a much bigger deal and there can be legal consequences that will follow that student for the rest of their life. Well, it oftentimes affects the student who does it because what happens is sometimes they send it to somebody who they trust at the time. Later on there might be a bad breakup, they might uh, the per person is, uh, doesn't like them anymore, and so what happens is the, or the person maybe isn't trusted worthy, and so they'll send it to all their friends and uh, it happens to get sent around. And what they thought was something very private ends up being uh, spread around to a lot of different students. Our staff went into more detail about sexting. So always think about uh, what would happen if one day you broke up, because the truth is most of you are going to break up with your boyfriend or girlfriend at some point in the future. Aside from legal consequences, there can be drastic emotional consequences. Because I think a lot of kids think that they're just being kids and they don't understand that this is something that can have a much longer lasting effect. And they think that it's a minor deal and it turns out to be a really big thing. Officer Issue let us know the punishment when caught sexting. Most severe punishment would probably be probation. Um, however, um, most, if, if it's a very egregious violation of the law, uh, they could be remanded to Department of Corrections, Youth Corrections, which is basically prison for kids. Uh, typically though, probation, fines, restitution to the victim is typically what you'll see as far as punishment goes. Now, if it's bad enough, you got, upon conviction, you could also possibly face being uh, registered as a sex offender. If you're sent a sexually explicit image, report and delete it. This is Owen Reeves reporting for KRAM. Always think carefully before you snap and send a picture because you never know who might end up seeing it. It would be three strikes and an out if you were to miss any of this season's Rampart softball. The team is 12 and 6 so far. Let's hear from the ladies themselves on how this upcoming season is shaping up. In the fall, girls from Rampart take their positions on the field for softball. They're halfway through the season, so Karen wanted to check in. We have a strong team this year, so I'm looking forward to going pretty far, hopefully winning league, going to districts, regionals. I think the season's going pretty well. We had kind of a rocky start at the beginning, um, just playing some harder Denver teams, but now that we're more into league season, um, we've been doing pretty well. As a new addition to the team, a few new coaches were introduced. We got two new coaches, and I mean, so far, I think we're on the right page. Both of them are nice. They've coached softball before, so they know what they're doing. Well, we have um, two new coaches this season. Um, so they've kind of brought a new dynamic to our team and like a different balance. The two captains this season have been a large part of the team's progress. Our leaders are our seniors, Ella and Kayla. They just keep the team together and under control. Um, Ella and Kayla are doing a great job. I love their leadership style. You know, they're not hard, but they're definitely firm and want to get stuff done. Another big change to the year is the competition. In previous years, the bigger league competitor was Pine Creek. Um, previous years, Coronado was kind of like a non-threat, but this year, their pitcher, I feel like, kind of, you know, gets in our head because she throws a lot of balls, but she's also a faster, probably one of the faster pitchers that we face in the league. They have a pretty good pitcher, so that was one of the things that we struggled with last time is, you know, hitting off of her. And you know, as far as other league teams, they're definitely up there competition-wise. So we lost to Coronado the last time we played them 4-2, to two, and we played them again next week, and we played them at home. 
So hopefully we'll come out with a win. In preparation for it, we just need to stay calm and play our brand of softball and not let the outside noise look, oh, you know, Cornell is better than you guys. We just need to play our game. We just need to get our bats going a little bit more because that's where we struggled last game. After the game against Coronado, what will come next? But now we're just trying to, you know, gear up and get ready for regionals. Good luck on the rest of the season in regionals, Rams. This has been Caitlin Zeiger reporting for KRAM. I can't wait to see where the season takes our team. Go Rams! Our science department is taking students all over the world to get real life experiences with their environment. They went to Iceland and now they're going to New Zealand. Over the summer, the RHS science classes took a trip to Iceland. Let's see what they have to say about it. Well, I always thought Iceland was really cool and I've definitely always wanted to travel around the world, so I thought I'd start there. We got to go and see the different like, glaciers and we ended up going and seeing some of the geysers and seeing how they actually power their main city. Have fun times, do exciting adventures with people that we just met. I thought the trip we went on many hikes, learning just about the nature of Iceland and all the like geological stuff there and we did went to a lava center and got to learn about all the volcanoes. It's a very volcanic location. The thing that interested me the most about this trip was the fact that we would get to hike on a glacier and we would be going out of country and I thought that that was something that was really cool. So we got to learn a lot about like the, the geothermal hotspots of Iceland and the super unique geography which was really neat. The days were really, really long so you did a lot of things in one day. For this year they will be going to Australia and New Zealand. Sign-ups have already begun. We are taking a 12-day trip to Australia and New Zealand. We'll start in New Zealand and in, in Australia. I call it sitting on a beach for college credit. All of our areas will be um, on ports and on, on the beaches, although we'll be doing things like visiting uh, geothermal parks, going to wildlife areas. One of the things about our trips is we're more outside than we are museums, and so we really like going out and being able to um, experience and watch all the different things that are going on culturally, but also in nature. Students that are interested should sign up soon. All the information is on Ms. Winnegar's website if you go to winnegarbiology.weebly. Um, it's also on the, the Rampart homepage. If you go to the homepage, you can find all the information there. The students that went to Iceland last year recommend taking the opportunity to go on the trip this year. I would definitely go again if I had the chance. Yes, definitely. A hundred times. <laughs> Yes. Oh, I would really recommend going on these trips. They're a lot of fun. For more information, go see Mrs. Pello or Mrs. Winnegar for details and questions. This has been Sydney Campney for KRAM, signing off. She is beauty. She is grace. She is Miss Ellie Cam, and she's training for the Olympics. We went to the Olympic Training Center to get a closer look at Ellie's progress in training. With bite-sized boots and an icy double axle, freshman Ellie Cam skates by her competition into the big leagues. My name is Ellie Cam. I figure skate competitively. We asked Ellie what it takes to be on her level. Well, I skate six days a week and I do about like four sessions a day. And fitting all that into a day requires an irregular schedule. We talked to Ellie's teammates and asked what their routine is. So I like wake up, I eat, I go to the rink, I skate um, 9, 11, 20, and 2, 5, and 4. Today I woke up around like 5 or 4, 45, and I went to the rink so I could get two sessions in before I came to school. We talked to her coaches to learn about Ellie's work ethic and who she is as an athlete. Uh, I think Ellie's one of those skaters that we call a skater skater, and that means that uh, as a former skater, I enjoy watching her skate because she has the athleticism, but she also has the beauty on the ice, the ease of movement. She's a phenomenal spinner. Uh, she kind of has all those attributes that make up a, a, a top-level competitor. Unfortunately, we could not get any footage of her practicing, but her coach, Tammy Gamble, paints a vivid picture. She has a special spark in her. She has... Um, something that you just can't teach. She has a little hunger in her that makes her want to be one of the best. She's a fiery little skater. Very talented young lady. Um, struggled with uh, double axle and beyond, uh, but now has recently got it, and it was just sheer determination. We asked Ellie's teammate what she attributes her success and determination towards. 
school. Like, so we have to make a lot of sacrifices. It's a dedication. You know, sometimes you ask to hang out on the weekdays. We're like, we can't, sorry, we have to skate. And like, we have to wake up early. And just a lot of dedication to the sport. You know, it's always hard to put your finger on potential on, a, you know, beyond nationals, internationals, things like that. But she has the skills to take it as far as she wants. We asked how far she wants to go and where her coach sees her going. Well, I do want to um, skate competitively, like internationally, um, and possibly be part of Team USA. So. You know what, I would like to see Ellie be able to make it to the US Nationals again, uh, where she has been as a younger skater. As you can see, the blades don't stop grinding. This is Steven Astor with KRAM signing off. Can't wait to cheer her on next Olympics. That's all for this week, Rams. We'll see you next time. And I'm, it's going up. <laughs> Better? You're sitting there, you said, dancer, singer, comedian, performers of all types should be getting read up with a certain moment. That's how you sound. <laughs> what do I have? Cute. You snap so loud. Wait. I can put the gym. At the, at the Bold of you to assume I'm literate. Is that too creepy? One take. Yates. Who might be up 